Okay guys, right, um, we want to take this to um, Keyshot now. Now, um, for some reason, my Keyshot bridge isn't working. I just need to sort it out and I haven't had time to just sort some of the settings out. So if you were using um, Keyshot bridge and to make it work, you would just hit this external render and you just check Keyshot. Um, what happens then is the next time you hit the BPR, it will open this up in Keyshot and you can do a render out. But mine's not working, so I've got to do it manually. So I've got my U mesh here on my complete mesh. And obviously, you know, it's it's um it's not too big. One, two, three, four, five, six, actually it's four point eight million. So I'm actually going to decimate it quickly. Um yeah, you know about decimation. Let's just go over it quickly while we're here. All we do is we go to this. I'm going to put this on about 12. I'm going to say pre-process current. As soon as that's finished, I'm just going to decimate and check that the quality is still there. I'm then going to export this out as an OBJ and I'm going to open it up inside of Keyshot. So now that's finished, um, I'm going to put this into a basic material here just so I can check that the quality of it's good. And uh, we're just looking at it here. I'm going to come into the plugin. I'm going to go decimate current. And just turn this on. That looks pretty good. Actually, it's a little bit low quality. So I'm going to go back one. If you look here, it's kind of staircasing a bit. So if I go back, it's nice and clean. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put this decimation amount to about 28. And then I'm going to hit decimate current and that looks better it's cleaner across there and that looks nice so what i can do now is i can just hit the export i'm going to put that into our render files let's call it um key shot test and i'm not supplying these files you can produce these yourself from the content that you've already got so i'm just going to save that out as an obj uh, i'm kind of finished with this file now so i'm going to close zbrush down because we no longer need it for this section and there's our keyshot obj so i'm going to open up keyshot now and here we go keyshot's open so i'm going to go to import uh, i'm going to go and locate my file render files and there it is keyshot test i'm going to click open uh, you're going to get a little box come up like this um, you can look at those if you want to but i just generally just hit import and bang it goes in there now the first thing you're going to see is, if we zoom out, um, the kind of floor, you can see a kind of shadow appearing there. Now, the first thing I generally do is go into environment over here on the right hand side and do make sure that you have the, um, the enabled docking open. I was going to try and find view, default, default views, yeah, and do make sure that you've got the environment open. Um, I'm so used to using this, I don't want to, but that's all right. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, let me just close that. I just want to find out where it is for you guys. Uh, environment there, click that. Ooh. Nope, where's that? View. Library, environment. Yeah, so it pops up. So over this side, you've got environment. Just make sure they're up. And when you're inside the environment, what we're going to do, sorry, inside the scene, is we're going to select this, select this piece. You can select it in here, like this. Or you can select it in here and we're just going to go to position and we're going to go snap to ground and what's going to happen it's going to pop up to the ground now if this is the wrong um, angle then you can use move and you can basically go in and you can move this around so then if you hold the um, shift key it will constrain it to a straight line like that so when you next move it you can snap it to the ground again to for it to be in the ground but i want it to be upright so i'm actually going to leave it as it was like that I think that's right and I'll snap it to the ground again and I'll click OK there so that's perfect you know it's in an upright position it's all good so 
zooming in and out moving around left mouse button tumbles middle mouse button zooms in and out middle mouse click and you can move it side to side you can also use I think you can use the control and left mouse button to move the lighting so you can just hold the control key and move the lighting by holding the left mouse button and holding the control key so I've just seen if there's any other bits oh. yep, spacebar turns that thing off uh, right so that's the basics on that so we can tumble around left mouse button okay so we get the view that we like and uh, you can also come into the camera over here and you can change that focal length so you can go for a 50 millimeter camera lens or you can go mad like that or you can go like this go the opposite way so um, you have the real control over that uh, now what I want to do is I want to put it into a silver and I want a cavity effect so just sim simply what we want to do is we want to create an we want to use an HDR eye image now at the moment if we come into environments over here uh, we've got studio settings and if you click one of these you can drag them into here and it gives you different settings for how it looks under those studio lights the default is startup which is here but I want to use an actual exterior so outdoors or interior we can click and drag those across now this is good but I don't want this image to show I want to apply these kind of effects but I on the image but I don't want it to be inside of here you know I want it to be I want these reflections to be from these image but I want the background to be different really easy to do it come into environment come down to color click that and it will change to the color so I'm going to click in here and I'm going to select a kind of dark darkish gray color something like that that will do maybe a little bit of brown in there something like that and then I'll drag this up and click OK all right now we need to apply a metal to it so under here we've got materials yeah and if we come to metals we can select and drag a material straight across to our model now if we come over here on the right hand side to material you can see that material there uh, we can drag any material we like across so you can play around with all of these different materials that you've got in here so that's quite nice nickel and you'll see that it'll update there now if you've got multiple objects you can color them differently and you'll have multiple materials appearing down here now to modify these materials we can double click and you're going to see that it appears up here now we can add a roughness to this material which I would like to do a little bit because it takes away a little bit of that um, reflection too much reflection looks a bit odd the other thing I want to do is I actually want to add a cavity into this so I want to darken the darker areas and um, it's quite easy to do it with one of the texture nodes so you'll see under properties here we have this thing to be able to roughen we also can add a kind of anodized material to this and you've got some settings there which can be good um, I'm going to turn that off for now and I'm going to come now into here you can see we can pick a different material so you can jump between materials really quite easily and of course you can drag them from here now we haven't just got metals we've got loads of materials in here that you can add play around with um, so the other thing I want to do is add a cavity to this so I'm going to come into texture now and under where it says texture and it says none I'm going to click in here and I'm going to go down to curvature which is down here now this will look at the curvature of the mesh and it will actually add a kind of darkened area into based on the curvature of the mesh so what I want to do is my negative I want to be black okay I'm going to click OK and my positive I'm going to put as black as well and I'm going to click OK in there okay now at the moment you're not really seeing anything until we start to play around with some of this stuff now it doesn't always work with some of the materials um, so it does take a little bit of fiddling with let me put that in there about that color 
I'm just going to change this to a diffuse and you can see what the curvature stuff's doing now. If I put this right up there. Oh, I put it right down here. It'll add loads. So you can see what it's doing. But like I said to you, sometimes it doesn't work very well. So I'm going to go into metal again and now it's kind of adding that darkness I don't know if you can see maybe it's a little bit too much so I'm going to go down to the texture again and I'm just going to increase this radius to try and get it it's a bit too much I'm going to move this curvature up bring this radius down a little bit Okay, that's not bad you can see it's actually picking up the actual mesh itself um, I might want to just come around this and change some of these settings this is a positive not really working the way I want it to let me try changing the negative no. okay I'm going to go back into this material I'm just going to roughen it um, it seems to be picking up the actual mesh which is weird because that didn't happen before um, I think it'd be alright if I rendered it okay so we're gonna look at another way this is actually quite good I quite like this um, but anyway so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go to curvature and we're gonna go down to occlusion okay so occlusion is going to give us this dark color in all of the occlusion areas so if I just decrease this you're going to see that it's going a bit lighter in here I can increase that radius and we can also add a fall off on there which doesn't really do a lot let's crank these to maximum but now you can see it's nice and dark in these little holes now of course you know we still got under here I could still make it a bit shinier if I wanted to and we got a lovely effect now also I've got a color here as well so if I want to tint it slightly um, I could go in and change the color unoccluded un we'll put it into this so I could choose a kind of just off color that looks better just got that little bit of an edge on it click OK and now we've got this which is pretty super cool so this is great so say we want to render this out I'm just going to show you quickly how we can render it out go to render go down to render funny enough and make sure you got still image and in here it kind of gives you a default so it's like a preset so um, I'm going to go 1920 big and I always make sure I've got a little bit of room at the top and the bottom to snip it away and I'm going to choose the render location my render location is going to be on the desktop so I'm going to click that and now you can tell it at the moment you can tell it what format so if I wanted to save it as a JPEG if I didn't want to take it into Photoshop I would just save it as a JPEG there but if I want to take this into Photoshop I'll leave it as PSD 
And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and say render all layers, all passes. And I'm going to add it to a Photoshop file like that. So render all passes, add to a Photoshop file. Now we're going to come down. Now we've done this pit. We're going to go to the options and we're going to say how much time we can we can say how many samples or we can say how much time you want it to spend rendering this out and you can have a custom control as well so you can tell it now be very careful about increasing these samples and ray bounces because they're going to add a considerable amount of time what I tend to find is it's quite good to do it this way just set this in a, sort of an hour and a half or something and just let it render or choose maximum samples of like 130 or something like that and that'll give you good but I tend to do the time so it'll give me the best result it can in the time that I've allowed so what I'm going to do now with that set up is I'm just going to hit the render button and what you're going to do now is you're going to find a little box appears where it starts to render and it gives you a little timer there and if you look at the screen now it will kind of pause the screen so you can't do anything in Keyshot while this is going ahead so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now and we're going to have a look at the render output when Keyshot has finished Welcome to this promotional video about a new course that I've brought out called ZBrush Jewelry Design. It's an in-depth jewelry design class using ZBrush 2019. This course is made up of various sections. The first section is understanding the basics. So we'll be going through all the basics of jewelry design and setting up a base mesh. Then we're going to move on to working with booleans and how to create subtractions, intersections and add additives to boolean and create the boolean mesh. We're then going to move on to creating brushes and controlling the details inside section 3. This includes curve on surface brushes, insert brushes and obviously controlling detail and depths of those brushes onto the surface of your base ring. Section four brings us on to lots of extraction techniques inside of ZBrush. We're then gonna look at hand sculpting, being able to work organically with models inside of ZBrush. And then we're gonna move on to UV and controlling that detail using various methods. This is section six. Section seven brings us on to a full workflow on creating this fish ring. It's a complete section on this and that moves on to section 8 where we'll use the same turtle uh, fish and turtle actually to create a fish pendant so section 9 is really when I say section 9 section 9 is going forward so this course is an evergreen course meaning that I will be sh adding more sections and more complete workflows as we go through now I also have a section, a render section that shows you how to render out your creations from ZBrush in both ZBrush and Keyshot. This could be handy for concepting and showing to the client. As well as this, I will also be adding a section on showing you workflow tips and how you can speed up production, how you can save out to folder all your creations to reuse at other times, also how to set up materials and how to save them out so that it becomes a bit easier for you to work with and customizing your workplace for jewelry design so this course is really in depth i really hope you enjoy it check out the link below to visit and find out more about all the sections and stuff that we'll be creating inside this zbrush jewelry design class